Hello and welcome to another early access draft for Modern Horizons 3. I'm Paul Chion and we are going to try to get some W's on the board. We've been really struggling so far, so hopefully we can turn things around here. I do have some learnings. We'll note that um, just learning from my mistakes is a big thing, right? And then the first draft, um, we kind of forced an archetype and we were lacking interaction. And the one thing that I just haven't been doing a lot is prioritizing interaction. So I'm going to just try to change my approach here and make sure that I do have enough interaction to deal with what my opponents are trying to do. One thing that I notice is there's a bunch of reach creatures in the format, and I'm going to try to make sure I have ways to kill that if I'm trying to fly over. Now, before this draft fires, I did want to say if you've enjoyed this content and wanted to support the channel, I do have a Patreon channel, patreon.com slash paulcheon. The link is in the description below, and I do want to give a special shout out to all the current patrons. Thank you so much for your support. One more! One more in the queue, let's do it! All right, number eight, let's do this. Let us win some matches, maybe? Okay, we have Crick, son of Yogmoth, wildly unplayable, do not take this. It's rare, it looks interesting, it's not good. We have a couple of good uncommons here. We have Bespoke Battle Wagon, which is a good energy card. We have Hope Ender Coatl, Coatl? which is another good, uh, decent Eldrazi creature. We have Amped Raptor, which I think is very, very nice. One in a red for a 2-1 First Striker. When Amped Raptor enters the battlefield, you get two energy. Then if you cast it from your hand, exile cards from the top card. So it's like a Blood Braid Elf for energy. And I'm really interested in trying out this energy deck. So uh, definitely something that I'm looking at here. And then Writhing Chrysalis is fantastic. It's a four mana, two, three Devoid. ETB make two Eldrazi spawn tokens. And when you sack another Eldrazi, you put a plus one, plus one counter on Writhing Chrysalis. So I think it's between that and the Amped Raptor. I do like the blue cards as well, but I think I'm going to take the single colored card here in the Amped Raptor. I just feel like this is similar in power level, but a single color. And this can go into any variety of decks. I can draft this in my red-white aggro deck or my blue-red energy deck. Definitely gets a lot better when you are looking to do the energy thing. Moving on to this pack, not going to take power balance. I don't think it's good. Kudo can be interesting in a green-white modification deck. Uh, for commons, we have Skoa, Inspired Inventor, Riddlegate, Gargoyle, all as decent cards along with the Serum Visionary. But for me, I am looking at the two spell lands here in Pinnacle Monk and Stump Stump. They're both very good. This is a red-green duel, and this one... I mean, they're both good effects. I feel like Stump Stomp is probably just better, so I'm going to take it here. It comes into play tapped. If I end up in red-green, it's going to be very good. I just think this is probably a slightly better effect than a 5-mana 2-2. Two -two. I mean, this is also really good. It gets you a spell and amped... Hmm. Let me know what you think between the two. I'm going to take Stump Stomp just because I feel like if I'm a red-green deck... Um, this one's going to be better for the mana fixing, but I do think it's close between the two. Particularly if I don't end up in an energy-based deck and I end up in red-green, then the 5-mana 2-2 two -two might not be as good, but well, I don't actually know which view is better for right now. The commons here all look okay, but I feel like it's going to be one of these two cards. Cursed Wombat is also quite good, but I kind of want to... Uh, take a red or green card here instead. I do think the Wombat's very good, but we have Bridgeworks Battle, which is another fight spell land, which is great, and Rel and the Implicit Maze, which is also a solid card. Five mana, deal two damage to something your opponents control, and then you get to draw two cards, and then you get a Spell Gorger Weird token. So the question is, which one do I like more? I'm going to take Rel and the Implicit Maze. I just want to try this as a Saga card, and I'm kind of mildly trying to avoid green here and try to cut off the red if I can only because it felt it's felt like green is a little bit overdrafted right now because everybody's trying to do the ramp Eldrazi thing so let's take Ral and the Implicit Maze and now we have this pack so no green cards or red cards in this pack so we have Dream Drinker Vampire which is an okay two mana creature it's a lifelink creature with Adept Dog Umbra, which is an okay effect, but the best card here by far is Fell the Profane, so I think I'm just going to take that. Red Black is looking to be the, uh, generally the artifact deck. There's uh, Envoy of the Ancestors, which is also an okay card. It's very good in the green-white modified deck because you can kind of 
race your opponents. But with the two red cards here, I don't know that I want to go red-white modify. I do think Fel the Profane is just the best card here. So I'm going to take this here and uh, see where things go. Whoa, what just happened to my pack? See where things go because we have two red cards and then a land that can be green and a black land. Moving into this pack, I mean, maybe we end up in black green. I don't know. That's an expanding ooze in this pack. There is a contaminated landscape, which I don't care too much for. Um, if I wanted to be red, white energy aggro, there's a solstice zealot, but this is not necessarily a sign that white's open. There's an emissary of soul fire, which is pretty cool if you want to be blue, white, but that's pretty far from what we have so far. So what, what do we like here? I don't see a good black card. There's an expanding ooze and there's a trickster's elk. I guess I'll take Trickster's Elk in case I end up in red-green. I think I like it a little more than the Dread Mask, but I think it's close-ish. And then we'll just kind of see where things go from here. Moving on to this pack, we have Wumpus Aberration. This card is an absolute beating of a card. If I'm maybe more of a red-green ag red -green aggressive type deck that has access to colorless mana, this thing hits really, really hard. Branching Evolution is just okay. It's kind of a build-around card. I like this in green-white specifically. I think it's between Wumpus Aberration and, and, and Airy Auxiliary. This card is also pretty good if you're looking to be very, very aggressive. Hmm. But with the Trickster's Elk, let's take the... Let's take the Wumpus Aberration and, and maybe we can go kind of a red-green beatdown deck. We'll see what happens here. I mean, maybe, maybe green-white is... We're also seeing some of the green-white cards, but wow, that is a seventh pick, Writhing Chrysalis. I'm going to slam it. I mean, I almost first picked it. And I kind of wish I had the other one given how our deck turned out now. But I'm going to take the Writhing Chrysalis. This is one of, if not the best common in the set. So very, very happy to have that here. I do like it over Hydra Trainee or any of these other cards. So maybe we can move into Red Green here. So let's uh, kind of... Stump Stomp is a... I'm going to count Trickster's Elk as a spell. And here we have... Sarpedian Simulacrum, which is an okay creature. It's really good in the affinity decks. But here I think I'm just going to take another spell land here in the Disciple of Freyalise. This just acts as a land and in the late game you can also just use this to draw a bunch of cards. I just think this is a perfectly serviceable spell land to play in your deck. And now we have this pack. Do we have anything with landfall? Not really. So we have Trickster's Elk, Sarpedian Simulacrum, and Colossal Dreadmask. This allows us to potentially splash, and if we have landfall things, that can also be decent. There's also Serum Visionary that's pretty late, but I don't think I care about that. I think I'm just going to take another Trickster's Elk here. It's something that you can play on turn 3, and then in the late game, um, you can bestow like a random Eldrazi and it'll be fine there. Here I'll take Skoa Ember Mage over Sarpedian Simulacrum, so definitely feels like red and green are the colors that we need to be. So let's hope that this is a better start than what we've had previously. I mean, it doesn't get much worse than what we've started with so far. So there's that. Here I'll take a sink into stupor in case we end up blue. That's a last pick faithful watchdog. So something to keep in mind. But feels like I'm kind of moving into a red-green Eldrazi ramp deck. Uh, although we don't have that much ramp. And that is an Emrakul. I just don't have that much ramp right now. It costs 12 mana. Madness for six, six colorless. This seems like more of a stompy-ish deck. I, I think this card is cool, but I just, I am not set up for it at all right now. Right? I'm just kind of curving out here just a little bit. So I, I mean, if there was nothing awesome in this pack, I would consider it. But I think Writhing Chrysalis is just a bomb level common almost. I, I, again, maybe I should have taken it over the Amped Raptor, but I'm going to take it here. I think Writhing Chrysalis is just going to be far too good in, uh, with what we have so far. That's another Writhing Chrysalis. I'm just going to keep taking this. The more I take, the more of these I take, the higher the chance it just makes it into my thumbnail. This also just gets better in multiple, by the way. You play this turn four and then turn five, you play another one, right? They just all start pumping each other. And then all of a sudden you have two six sevens in play. That seems awesome. Let's take another Writhing Crystal. Maybe number four? Nope. All right. We're, we're holding steady here at writhing, three Writhing Chrysalis. Chrysalises. And uh, now we have this pack. With all the Writhing Chrysalis, now the Skoas also just get better. So for me, it's between the 
Skoa and the Colossal Dread Mask. And I think I like the Skoa better. We don't have that much removal right now. We have a Stump Stomp and a Rell in the Implicit Maze. So let's take another Skoa here as removal. And uh, this is shaping up pretty reasonably here, right? We have just a nice little red-green beatdown shell here. Now we have an interesting choice. We have Devourer of Destiny, which is a 7-mana 6-6 six, six, ETB Exile Target Permanent. That's one or more colors. Or Eldrazi Repurposer, which is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three, that makes an Eldrazi Spawn Token. You know, with the triple Writhing Chrysalis, now I'm going to take the Devourer just because I think this card is really sweet. Um, I think the Repurposer might actually be the correct pick here, particularly with the three Writhing Chrysalis, but I'm going to take the Cool Rare. And you want to see me take the Cool Rare. See, this is like more reasonable. Hardcasting Eldrazi seemed less reasonable at the time, which is why I didn't take it. But here, we're talking about a seven mana kill any non-Eldrazi card, which I think is pretty reasonable. And hey... If you have this in your opener, it also does something cool, right? You get to basically look scry four, kind of. No, you can you get to look at the top four and put one card on top. So I think that's kind of cool. Now where we have two sixes and a seven now and a five here. So we're looking pretty good at the top end of the curve. So let's try to keep things cheaper on the mana curve. With triple writhing chrysalis and a wumpus aberration, I am... <laughs> That's another, another Emmer Cool. I am really looking for that two mana, one, two death touch creature that taps for a colorless or a mana of any color. I think that would be amazing here, but we don't see that here. Still not gonna take an Emmer Cool. Gonna look to take something cheaper. There's an Evolution Witness, which is another mana hungry card or a Warped Tusker. This, I think I'm just gonna take Warped Tusker. I think the reach here is pretty nice and cycling this is pretty nice and it works well with the Rising Writhing Chrysalis and the Devourer of Destiny. I think the Warped Tusker is gonna be something that I want a little bit more than the Evolution Witness to start. Now we have Void Pouncer, which is okay, but I'm never taking it this early. Drowner of Truth is just really nice. Uh, we don't have blue mana, but I mean, it's still just a tap land that I can use for five green green to make to play a seven drop, which is amazing. So I'm going to take Drowner of Truth as another spell land. Can't get enough spell lands. This is also just really nice in being able to kill uh, just a, if your opponent just has this huge army of random Eldrazi tokens. This is just really nice. Here we see no red or green cards whatsoever. So I will just take one of these lands. The question is, which one do I think is better? This one gives me blue, green. This one gives me red. But I think we're more likely to splash blue. So I will take the Tranquil Landscape as a land that produces colorless mana, but that can also get me a green source. And then now we have this pack. We have It That Heralds the End. I think I want to take this. I want to play this. I want to try it out. There's a Bountiful Landscape, which is also quite nice. But this is a pretty cool card. It makes all my Eldrazi spawn tokens uh, into one twos, and it makes my seven drop cost one less. So another build around Eldrazi card that I want to try out. And wow, okay. At what point is do we have too many Skoa Ember Mages? I think I've hit that limit. I don't know that I'm gonna play all of these. Ooh, another Rally in the Implicit Maze. Wow, our deck is just not short on expensive things. So I really want to keep my mana curve low moving forward. So let's try to just take all the cheap cards that we can moving forward. We have 16 spells here. We can certainly cut one of these expensive cards. Mog Mob is just simply too hard to cast. So I'll just take a Wirewood Symbiote in case we get enough elves, but it's unlikely. I wonder if there's like this weird split where I should consider playing two Skoas and one Colossal Dreadmasks. But uh, yeah. I'm not sure on that. What do we have here? There's a Bloodstained Mire. There's another Rowl in the Implicit Maze, but I do think I already have two, so I'm not too interested in it. So here, it's between Eldrazi Repurposer and Bridgeworks Battle. And I am in the market for a three drop. So I think in this instance, we do have a bunch of spell lands already. I think this effect is quite strong, but I do think I want a three drop that makes an Eldrazi that ramps me as well. I think this is just everything that my deck needs right now. It's just a really good speed bump. So I will take this over the Bridgeworks Battle, even though I do really like Bridgeworks Battle. I just feel like with it that heralds and the Chrysalis, it just goes perfectly with everything that this deck's trying to do. Moving on here, we have Breaker of Creation. And I misread this card when I first saw it. 
your lands are colorless permanent. So when you play this and you ramp this out, you gain like five or six life. So I think this card is actually very, very solid and I'm gonna take it here. Another big expensive card. We are good on expensive things. So let's just keep trying to keep our mana curve low. I actually don't know if I should play the Amped Raptor. It's kind of like exile a spell two mana two one. Is that something that I wanna play? I don't know. Here I'm gonna slam Spawn Gang Commander. This card is ridiculous. Five mana for a two two Eldrazi. You get three spawn tokens, so it helps you ramp, right? Which is amazing with all these writhing chrysalises. But you can also pay two to sack an Eldrazi, and it deals two damage to any target. This is an absolute bomb. Let's slam it. And what do we have here? Not interested in Inventor's Axe. This is only something that you really want to play in, um, in like maybe an Affinity Aggro deck, so not something that I want here. Uh, no good red or green cards here, actually. So I'm going to just take a land here. I do need colorless sources of mana to be able to cast some of these cards. Namely, the Wumpus Aberration, the Activation on Spawn Gang Commander, and Casting Devour of Destiny and Breaker of Creation. So I'll take a Shattered Landscape here. It's not insane, but nothing else really for us here. So let's just use this as an opportunity to take a colorless land for our deck. And uh, go to this pack. Here we have... Another kind of a blink of a pack. I can take another uh, land that gives me a colorless mana source, or I can take another Trickster's Elk. Huh. This is also not bad on your spawn tokens, by the way. You just turn them into 3-3s, three and then you get a 3-3 three three back. All right, I'm going to tr try these Trickster's Elks and just see how they play out, because I'm not sure. I thought these cards, th this was pretty bad, but... Um, Luis and Marshall ranked it fairly highly. Um, so I could be wrong on this. So I want to give this a shot. I don't know if four... I don't think these actually get better in multiples. I don't know that I want four Skoa Ember Mages. Do I want Arena of Glory? Or do I just want another Ral? I guess I'll just take another Ral and the Implicit Mage. I mean, this gives you a lot of value. Maybe I play like two and one. Our curve is so darn high. I wanted um, Lava Coils. I wanted just anything cheap. I'm glad I took this uh, Eldrazi Repurposer. We're just not seeing anything cheap here. What's our land situation? That gets us a black. This gets us a blue. I mean, I'll play this in case I need a three drop, I guess. But uh, this card's just absolutely awful in this deck. Cranial Ram this late. All right. The Artifacts deck seems kind of open. I will take uh, Temperamental Oozwag. Man, it is... I have been on the lookout for cheap stuff and I just haven't been able to find it. I just have not been able to. I mean, I guess this card can just also be fine. I don't think I want Ral and Implicit Mage number four. So let's take another spell land, I guess. And then now I'll take a Dog Umbra in case I need to... Uh, or do I want... Actually, no, I have some blue fixing. I have more blue fixing than white. So maybe I'll take the Demon Inferior. And now we have Sarpedian Simulacrum versus Nyxborn Hydra. I don't need another really expensive card. I'll take the Simulacrum as a potential um, cheap, not cheap, but just a potential thing I can play early that I can use to just kill things. I don't think another, I need another Wirewood Symbiote. Wow, last pick Cranial Ram. I don't know why I hate drafted that, but I guess I'm a hater. Okay, how did this end up? Think it ended up okay. Um, we have a bunch of these spell lands. Actually, TCR doesn't work really well with spell lands because I need to kind of put these all here. So this is 19, 20, 21. So this gives us five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine green sources, 1, 2, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. All right, so this gives us five, six, seven, eight, nine green sources and six, seven, eight, nine red sources. All right, so that's nine green, nine red. And this gives us 17 lands. And then this is kind of the configuration that we have. Let's take a look at our sideboard here. I don't really like Sec Siege Smash in this type. I'm not really an aggressive deck, so I don't really need the combat trick. 
I think I'm just kind of playing everything that I can. So maybe I just go with this. But this is also a deck that requires just more mana in general. So I think I'm going to add another land here. Uh, maybe another mountain. And cut something. Actually, I think I'm going to just play two more lands. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, yeah. And then let's cut something expensive. It's either a Skoa or... A Colossal, you know, three is probably a lot. So let's cut one of those. And I think I'm going to cut the Amped Raptor. Um, just because we have literally nothing else that makes energy and nothing really to cast off of it. So it's a two mana, two one first strike, which is not really what this deck's trying to do. Actually, maybe I just, maybe I just play um, one less land here. All right, let's just cut this. Okay, let's try this. Another deck with a pretty suspect mana curve, but uh, we have some powerful top end. So hopefully the Writhing Chrysalis gets us there with the top end cards that we have. I kept the Dread Maw just because maybe with all the mana that we have, we can move it around, but... Okay. A lot of hands are not going to look pretty with this deck, let me just say. All right, what do we have here? I mean, I can bestow the Sarpedian Simulacrum. Beatdowns. Beatdowns. The thing is, if they kill the Sarpedian Simulacrum, I get a 3-3 back, so that's fine. Oh, they're setting up. They are setting up. Writhing Chrysalis here from us. Oh, this card's so ridiculous. Just every time I look at it, I'm like, what? Really? Really, really? Okay, so they made a 6-6 six, six here. Wow. That is awesome. Um... Well, we will also make our own 6-6, six, six, I guess. Oh, I'm glad I played the Dread Mask. I mean, they're stuck on three lands, but uh, so hopefully we can finish this off here. Yeah. I mean, even if they kill, even if they kill this, I can just turn something gigantic, right? If I move it here, it's a 10, 10, 11 trampler. All right, so that becomes a 5-5. Five, five. I don't think they're going to attack me. Oh, man. Th this is terrible on, on our opponent's creatures, by the way. Oh, but I can bestow on this and it becomes a... It becomes a 9-9. Nine -nine, which kind of forces a block. But I kind of want to just attack and then move it, so... Wait, if I, if I do this... They have to block here and they eat something so they don't die. Well, but they have to block two things, right? So they're probably going to block the Chrysalis and the Dreadmaw. So they're going to block the Chrysalis and the Dreadmaw. This trades and they go to three. Let's get aggressive while they're stuck on lands. Yeah. So they're going to go to three here with the Hydra Trainer.
but I can move the Colossal Dread Mask, so I think it's going to be pretty tough for them when I move this Living Weapon. And even when these trade, I get a 3-3 afterwards, right? So that's pretty good, too. I don't think I want to sacrifice this because I have the, um, I have the double, double colorless mana Eldrazi in my deck. So I don't think I want to fetch. Okay, it's a 4-5. <laughs> Colossal Dreadmask just getting it done. Colossal Dreadmask just getting it done. Look at that. Boom. Also, our opponent was stuck on three lands. But hey, with how bad we've been doing, I will take any victory. Any victory whatsoever. Alrighty, quick 1 0 start. What do we have? Yeah, I mean, two green sources and two red sources. Can't complain. Uh, I mm, Maybe I should have just sacked this right away. Smelting charge bug. All right, so red, white aggro. Ooh, ooh. That does kind of change things. We'll see what they do. Because I want to play this with colorless mana, of course. And it just gives me a 6-6 Trampler. So I guess now I'm going to choose not to sacrifice this. Hex Gold Slith. Okay. If you do... This gets Menace? Oh, that's really annoying. Huh. This thing has Menace. Hmm. I suppose I could have sacked to try to get the Rell and the Implicit Maze going. Because this thing might get out of reach soon. So this thing grows. Conduit, wow. I mean, this is what a good energy aggro deck should look like, right? So, shouldn't be too surprising. I'm gonna just keep all my creatures back here and uh, hope for the best. If they have a way to kill my Aberration here, then it's it's going to be pretty tough. Okay, well, they can't use that immediately, which is nice. Oh, no, they can. Oh, my gosh. Wow. These are just all... Wait, what? They don't want to tap? Huh. That was surprising. That was definitely surprising. Hmm. The Rowland Implicit Maze doesn't seem that great anymore. So I don't know if that's the game plan that I should be going for. The question is, uh, do I want to use... Um, stump Stomp. To kill the Tapper? Seems pretty good. I mean, we're on the, we're on the back foot here, so I'm gonna just 
try to play it conservatively here if I can. What the heck? You may pay X. Each player may exile their hand and draw X cards. Is this a Wheel of Fortune? Exile your hand and draw seven cards. Well, a, exile their heart. If, if, seven. Huh. Yeah, okay. Ether Spike? Where did this come from? All right, I think we may be stabilizing here. I think we may be stabilizing here. Let's see. Wheel of Fortune effects generally are not great, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Three energy. I hope they play another creature. Oh my gosh. Ral and the Implicit Maze is gonna be absolutely ridiculous. Oh no no this gets that gets haste. Okay, okay. I can block it though. Oh, they can give it lifelink too. Alright. Um let's still just do that. Okay. I mean, that's a f that's still a fine trade for us. And that clears their board. Attack. And then next turn we get to gain a million life, or... We have all kinds of different options here. Rush of Inspiration. Do they have energy? They don't. They discarded a card at random and they hit a land. Okay, they're fetching now. So next turn we have access to three, six, seven, eight mana. So we can play the Breaker of Creation. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit concerned about counter magic, so I might just... Um, just hold off on that and just play some other things. Just play whatever I get off the rail here. I mean, they probably have a counter spell. No, but wait, I can't. I can pay for the counter spell. I can pay for the counter spell. Okay. It's only counter spell for the amount of energy you have, and my opponent spent all their energy, so we have a huge board. They're at five life. Uh, they're gonna need some kind of like a wrath or something here, and then we can still follow that up with Breaker of Creation, which is really difficult to kill when it resolves. Next turn, we get a Spellgorger Weird Token. All right, Dog Umbra. I mean, this is still lethal. Another Dog Umbra? Nope. Um. All right, let's see what you got.
My creature tramples, so... Okay... Alright, well, we got them with the trample. I mean, I could have sacked my Sarpedian Simulacrum, but we got them. That Ral enchantment thing was pretty nice, so pretty happy with that. And we <laughs> hopefully we can get the silver by the end of this by the end of this event. Oh man, this we are uh, we are off to an embarrassing start. But trying to turn things around with our Gruel Eldrazi beatdown deck. Okay, on the play here, we have three forests, a mountain, Ral and the Implicit Maze, Trickster's Elk, and Temperamental Oozewag. So, you can just curve out, and then maybe Ral and the Implicit Maze does some stuff. This card seems pretty solid. I know it's a little bit slow, but I feel like we shouldn't have been getting this so late. It's one-sided, which is really nice. It's like, kill one little thing, and then discard a card to... You basically discard a card to draw two cards, and then make a weird... I mean, that all seems solid enough. Alright, red-black. The artifact deck. Dross Claw, okay? It's a two-mana 1-1, one, one. not too scared of that. Let's just play a three-mana 3-3 three, three here. I mean, that's why this card, it just, it looks pretty bad, but hey, the fact that you have that flexibility where sometimes you can just play a turn three, like, that's not that bad. Now we play this. We can't play Ral in the Implicit Maze, sadly. I wonder if I should be playing one more red source than green source because I have so many of these and I have the Skoas and they're double red. So might want to make that adjustment. Really would love a mountain here just to get this going, just so I can dig deeper. Basically, the card I don't want to draw is Forest. Oh my goodness. Alright, mountain off the top would be fantastic. Mountain. That, that was not mountain. All right, there's a lot of chip damage coming in here from them. Yeah, and I have the Skoa. Two Skoas, even. All right, they are going off with the artifacts. Oh, they have the Discharge? Jeez. There is the mountain. He's killed a handful of things. I most I I mean the big thing there is just I'm just looking for uh the big thing is I'm just looking for for more action. So that's why I'm that's why I did that. What they should do is move the Dross Claw onto the Molten Gatekeeper. Do they have a spell here? Oh yeah, they have the discharge. Yeah, Pinnacle Monk is fantastic. They have a discharge in hand. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I just what? What am I supposed to do with this? I can't play them. Oh, man. Uh... Uh... That, that was like the worst possible hit off this thing. Man. Alright. I don't see... Oh, if I can draw the... Um, 
the chrysalis off the top, then I can play the chrysalis. No, I'll, I'll still be one mana short. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. But good artifact deck from the opponent. I think we're just dead. I mean, this was just a really great draw from the opponent. Good. Uh, the discharge is fantastic. Getting it back with the Pinnacle Monk. I mean, they're just attacking for so much. So, I mean, I'll I'll play it out here. But, uh... Um, what does this do? I gain some life. Yeah. All right. GG's League of Magic. Great, great artifact based decks. I mean, it's just nice seeing all these different archetypes in action and just seeing how they play out because it gives me a sense of, it gives me a good sense of what I should be looking out for to be able to draft those successful, those uh, strategies successfully as well. Okay, we are two in one. We are on the draw here. We have four lands, a Writhing Chrysalis, Spawn Gang Commander, and Ral and the Implicit Maze. I really, really wish I had more cheap things to do. I just didn't see a single Lava Coil or two mana ramp creature. So this is kind of where we are as a result. I'm going to hold off on this. I feel like with the Writhing Chrysalis, if I draw another land, I can just... Hard cast this, which seems pretty good. This is an extremely slow hand, but we have an extremely slow deck. Fortunately, our opponent's playing blue black, so hopefully that's a thing. Just gonna play this again. Three mana, three three, beat down. Next turn we can go Chrysalis, and then the turn after we can play Drowner of Truth using colorless mana, and then this will just make me two uh, zero ones again. So, yeah, I love me a Drowner of Truth. I'm not sure what combat tricks exist in this format, by the way, so I'm just attacking and just seeing what happens. Granted, I also have four mana available, so if they're just willing to trade here, I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't know that there was a minus X minus zero effect, though. though. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that I don't care about at all. The, the sick thing about this card is even if they counter it, it's a cast trigger. That's ridiculous. Is this a cast trigger as well? It sure is. It sure is. So you just guarantee the spawns. Maybe I should have just first picked this card in that last pack. This card just, just doesn't seem real. I mean, for example, compare this to Temperamental Brushwag. Like, it's just not even close. This would be a decent Trickster's Elk target, I guess. So this is pretty nice. They can sack this. And then return the Kami of Jealous Durst and get a 3-3 and a Death Touch creature in play. I'm not going to attack here. I have no interest in uh, giving them a 6-6. Six, six. 
This reform against red green specifically, I just, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. It's just so big. I do have this Skoa Ember Mage to uh, finish off this Kami of Jealous Thirst so I can get in for an attack next turn, I guess. All right, our opponent made a play. Sure. Drown of Truth has been bounced. Feel like they don't want to attack me? Yeah. Ooh, stump stump. I mean, nothing I really care about killing just yet. I mean, is it just play this again? Feels like it. I mean, spawn gain commander is also incredible here. We I mean, we have a just we do have a lot of powerful effects here available. We can try to develop a really big board and then just attack into this. Okay, that's fine. They only have three energy. So they can't actually target their, uh, the reform unless they play another spell that gets them energy. Okay. Yep, Petrifying Meddler is good. I mean, they have a nice def defensive board set up here. Oh, that is nice. Oh, I can exile this. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, let's do that. Yes. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That was fantastic. That was an annoying card. Now I want to get rid of the death touch creature, which I can with the spawn uh with this Goa Ember Mage. I also have Stump Stomp as an option, but I kind of want to use this to kill a seven power creature or whatever, a, a bigger creature, which I can. Depending on what they do this turn, I can next turn can be really, really good for us, right? We can um Skoa Ember Mage the Kami. And then stump stomp the four or five, for example. Okay, grave dig. Sure. Did they have a land? Can I do some weird combination of Ral plus Spawn Gang? I don't think so. Oh, wait. Amphibian Downpour is not particularly good in Writhing Chrysalis. Oh, they, oh, they do it for three? Oh my gosh. Oh, no, for two. Yeah, that's... Okay, it's a 5-5. Five, five, sure. All right. What do we want to do? This has no ability, and it's a 5-5. Five, five. I, th I think it just kill everything. So let's... uh. Do this. I wonder, do I want to trade this for Death Defiler? I don't think so. So let's just attack for six. Because we can remove this token next turn with Ral. And the Implicit Maze. Ay, yeah, yeah. Okay.
This card's actually better than I thought, because every time you return it, you just get the energy back. Oh, so they can get the... Yeah, they can get their, their death touch thing back. If they want. So now how do I want, they're at 14. This will trade with Drownyard Lurker. This will also get in for damage. I guess those are the creatures we want to attack with. Okay, let's see what they do. Uh, four mana, they have access to six, seven, eight mana. So they don't quite have enough to go reform into Sacrifice with Eviscerator's Insight. But they can sack um, Chthonian Nightmare to get their Death Touch creature back. Then they can replay it. Do they have another cheap creature to get back? They don't. But, I mean, they might as well replay it anyways. Actually, they could have sacrificed this to make a 6-6 if they wanted. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. What do I want to pitch? I think I want the spawn game commander to potentially finish them. So I'm going to discard this trickster Zelk. I feel like after... Um... Huh. I, oh, trickster's elk on the fish seems pretty good though. All right, maybe we just discard this. Hmm. All right, let's do this. Um, because, I mean, we're not going to get ideal trades here, but um, just trying to give them an empty board is pretty nice. And then I can play Spawn Gang Commander and then... Um, Deal two damage to like the like if the Death Defiler blocks the Trickster's Elk, I can just deal two damage to finish it off. And if they have no board, then the Chthonian Nightmare doesn't really do anything anyways. So okay, that's totally fine. I mean, I get my Elk back too, and then we get to whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, actually, it doesn't matter. We'll play Spawn Gain Commander. All right, we have a pretty decent board. We can we got a long, lot of flings available, and all they have is the Chthonian Nightmare here. So this is looking okay, but of course it depends on what they top deck. And I will say I was wrong. I was wrong. Trickster's Elk is definitely better than I thought it was. It's like a C level card. I thought it was a D, and I will have to adjust my rankings as it it's just been totally fine. There's a lot of cool cards with a lot of cool effects, and that kind of shuts it down. We are 3 and 1! More wins than all of our other drafts combined. All right, we are playing against Cordocalls. Great, great limited magic player. Definitely check him out. Uh, one of the best limited content creators out there, in my opinion. 
And already silver, so way better than us. Alright, looks like they are getting aggro. And not much we can do about it. We have a very slow deck too. Okay. I'm just gonna play this. Nothing, huh? Okay. Uh... Alright, let's just play a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, I should, uh, I forgot to add another mountain to my deck. What do you have? They started with turn one Mandibular Kite and then played nothing for the next three... T I mean, it's good for us because our deck's trying to go into the late game. Now I'm kind of regretting playing this, but like when you start green-white, you just kind of assume that they're going to do something. And they just didn't. Okay. Do I even want to play this? It just kills this. I'll just play a 4-4, whatever. Oh, no, 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 that, that was my mistake. I should, I should have attacked. I should have attacked, and then if they block, I play this and clear the board. Yeah. That was my bad. I definitely should have attacked. Yeah, that was my bad. Pretty far away from the breaker of creation, but we got Skoa going. Don't really want to sack two mountains. <laughs> Colossal Dread Mask, okay. What do I want to do? Alrighty. Gonna take a big hit here from the Dread Mask, but... I mean, technically they're at 9. Is there a world where we can just kill them? <laughs> just out of nowhere? Maybe. I mean, depending on what they do. Ooh, that's... That's annoying. Wait, they... They didn't bestow either. I oh they're gonna flip this. This family cannot end soon enough. Wow. And then what does this do? Oh. I gotta think about this. Now now I might be in like the trouble zone. Do I grandeur and kill Envoy of the Ancestors? So that Soren doesn't flip? That feels so bad. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like I had to do that. They were going to gain a million life and kill all my creatures. And we're lacking the um, the colorless mana for these cards, sadly.
Yeah, I mean that th that might have been too big of a loss. I don't know, but uh, I I wonder if there was a better way to do that with the extort, but. I'm going to go fetch a mountain here because I need to cast this, I think. I mean, this is going to be a disaster next turn anyways, um, but I don't know. I'm going to cast this just because I feel like um, I'm going to need to dig here. The thing is, they can Colossal Dreadmaw the Sorin, and then I just lose. I mean, I, I can't beat this either, so... Yep. They got me. You know, this, um... The Bestow deck's looking pretty solid, to be fair. The, um... And also the equipment looked to be pretty solid as well. I am going to... Add a mountain and cut a forest from this deck. Uh, do I want, like, a shatter effect? Is that something that I just want? I just, probably not, right? That still seems too weak. Uh, let's just keep it like this. I mean, I, I'm well aware that my deck's kind of clunky and also my interaction's not very great, but it does have a lot of power. So we just need to kind of try our, to have a decent start and uh, beat people down. Man, road to rank one. This is like road to get out of... Road to get out of bronze. Can we just get out of bronze? One time? Oh, this wasn't my opener. Uh Oh, I got have to exile the rest? Do I want to do that? I like my hand. You may reveal this card if you do. Look at the top at the beginning of your first game, look at the top far card. I mean, I got to, right? Uh, which one do I want to keep in my library? It's the Wumpus Aberration. All right. I mean, 6-6 six, six Trampler, right? I can go turn 3 Purposer, Repurposer rather, and then into Wumpus Aberration, so... Hoping that that's good enough. Looks like a counter spell here, but I still get my spawn. Ether Spike seems quite nice. Oh my gosh, did they do the thing? No, it's just colorless. <sighs> okay, um... I mean, if you had back-to-back -back counter spells, so be it, right? It's like... Come on, that's not- that's not a playable magic card, come on. <laughs> I gave this an F! I guess if you, they two for one themselves, they got me. Darn. Big darn. All right, let's cycle this to try to find a land. Okay, we did, that's great.
Oh, they took three. Psychic Frog. An etched slith, okay. Do they want to discard their entire hand? I uh, will see. Okay, they were they were not in fact interested in discarding their entire hand. Spawn gang. So I can sack these two and then shock something. Okay. What is there's so much there's so many different lands going on here. Okay. I mean, I just pass, right? And I just kill everything? Or I can even kill them. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah. I mean, we'll see what they do. They have to kill my spawn game commander. Oh, wait. I can definitely kill them. I can just... I just realized. I just realized. I can... I can just burn them out, right? Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, two, four. I have to sack two, though. No, that doesn't work. I need colorless mana, sadly. Um, okay. That's fine. We're going to go to the face. Because <laughs> we have this one too. And if we draw this, they just die. Unless they have life gain, I guess? I mean, we'll see. If they play, um... What is it? That thing, that breaker of creation, that's one thing, right? Come on, let's work. I mean, I could have, I guess, done this like on their upkeep or something. Boom. <laughs> we burned them out. Burned them out with Skoa. Did not expect for that to be a thing, but here we are. All right, four wins. I'm happy with four. This is just so many more wins than we've had in the past. So we'll, 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 we'll be happy with this even if we lose. All right, we are on the play, and uh, we have a lot of red sources. But that's fine. Let's play our one drop and beat down.
Turn one, tuned to this one. That's an instant, right? Need some green mana here. Well, let's see what they do here. If they use two energy, then that's fine. Okay, nothing from them and nothing from us. Electrozoa, okay. They have so much energy. I kind of want to just get there with this Ral and the Implicit Me, so I guess I just block nothing, or take nothing. I hope they don't have a counter spell. God. I mean, this just smells like a counter spell. All right, whatever. The way that they play, like, I was hoping that they would tap out for something, but given how they are playing, like, this is pretty clearly a counterspell, but, I mean, I just have to run into it. Oh, it's not. Okay. I basically just didn't want to take the chance of just getting run over here. Run over, rather, so. Um, I did... I mean, just the way that everything was sequenced out there, it just wasn't ideal for me, but it is what it is. Land here would be great, as I can just scoa the Ross cut. Uh, well, I should have been more specific. I'm gonna just play this to play it. And play this as a land. Definitely kind of overestimated the colorless sources that I'd have. I feel like I need to draft colorless lands a little bit more aggressively here. Um, huh. Yeah, I want to do this because next turn I can go Wumpus Aberration plus Temperamental Oozwag. So let's go ahead and kill this ta uh, the Tapper. We'll take the four. And the next turn we can just play everything. I mean, they're they're probably going to be out of things anyways here, so. Okay. It is super duper dead. Let's hope they don't have another creature here. Oh, I guess I can just wait on it now. Well, actually, I can just play it off of this, right? If I want. All right. Writhing Chrysalis, heck of a magic card. Well, we have stabilized. I don't know if we're ahead or behind. It really just depends on what else is left in their hand. But we do have another 6-6 six, six in our hand. And they're on the 4-5 Rose Caught Knight. We're at 7 life. Ooh, okay. Hey, we gained 6 life. Wait, how much do we gain? Oh, is it mana cost? Mana value? Okay, never mind. All right, well, can't attack here. And uh, now it's just, I guess, 
Top Deck Wars? What on earth? I have no idea what this can be. Is it a sweeper? Oh. Okay. I mean, my creature has reach, which is nice. I don't know if they know that or not. I mean, I'm getting aggressive here. I want to sack at least one thing. I mean, this thing... Does this have trample? Yeah. But I do want to keep these two around. Because um, I do have El Colorless Eldrazi I can cast, and they cost two, two Colorless to play. So I'll sack one. I could have dealt two more points of damage, I suppose, but I think this is still going to be enough to get it done. Okay, all these flyers don't matter because I have just random reach on all my things. Okay. Alrighty. They're at six life. Hmm. Let me just do the math here. Six, seven, eight, nine, thirteen, forty, fifty, six, seven. Yeah, okay, this is just way more than lethal. Like, none of their creature- like, all my stuff tramples. Okay. Writhing Chrysalis. Completely absurd. That's what we learned. I mean, we already knew that. We knew that it was a B-level common, but man. That thing does some work. Five and two! Alright, we are on the play here. We have three lands. Alright, we'll keep. A red land, a green land. Play that. Probably want to keep the colorless source if we can help it. Although, does this get a red? We do have spawn gain commander. So maybe I want to just get a mountain. Okay, well that... Hmm. This is a good card though. No, I feel like I'm going to just want to hit all my land drops to be honest. I'm just going to play this. Like, it's a little bit awkward because it's such a good spell, but we have a Dread Mask, a Spawn Gain Commander, like, I just... I'm just gonna play it as a land. I just don't want to miss land drops for, like, the next four or five turns. Ooh. What does this say? Uh, okay. Whenever it attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on target modified creature you control. I see. I mean, that is kind of annoying. I can play this to kill this, but then they can adapt this and hit me for five. I can also just um, Trickster's Elk this, just take it slow. Yeah, let's just take it slow. And that, was a, that would have been a reason to keep something like a Stump Stomp, right? Just to use it to kill it.
Dream Drinker Van. Okay, so they're doing black green counter stuff. Okay. Ooh, that's not bad. Kind of want to keep that one, I think. All right. Let's play let's play this now. I think it's going to be good. Even if they pump this, even if they pump this, they're going to lose their uh, Eldrazi spawn thing. So it kills a vampire and an Eldrazi. It's not the worst. I wonder what I want to discard. Probably just anything that I draw here, right? I, unless it's better than one of the three cards in my hand, which seems like it's going to be pretty tough. Okay. Now let's discard this. Man. I can bestow onto this too. It'll turn it into a 4 4. All right. We'll do that. I want to still like add to my board, right? So, as much as this card can be useful. Like, I don't want to just get run over if they have a removal spell for one of these creatures. So I still just want to keep adding to the board. Next turn, I can by playing that land, I can ensure that I can play the Dread Mask. Okay. They have double removal? Man, that's a beating. They did have double removal. All right. All right, we're at 10. Okay. That's certainly interesting. I think I'm just going to play the Dread Mask, though. That puts a counter on this as well. So this still blocks with one of these two. And I get a 6-6. Six, six, which I like. Like, obviously, if they have... Infinite removal or whatever, it's not great. But it's pretty hard to kill this unless they have, like, murder. The the hero's downfall card that lets them gain a life. I mean, this thing still gave us some value, right? It killed a 2-1 and a Scion. Uh, we've got to play two cards off of it, and we have a 3-3 left over. Cannot be too upset at that. And if at any point these creatures trade with something, then I get a 3-3. Hmm. So they're going to adapt this in response, and I won't be able to kill it. When, when, you, when you may exert as it attacks. When you do, target creature gets plus X plus X, where X is the number. Okay. I mean, I'm just going to play this. So now I have a 5-6, six, a 6-6, six, six, and a 3-3. Three, three. Sure, they get to adapt here, but uh, I have plenty of good blockers in play. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, all right.
This should be pretty good. I don't know if I'm in a position to attack just yet. I don't think so. I definitely want to kill the Hydra Trainer, probably. Breathe your last, okay. So I can sack this, but then I don't have any more mana to sack things to to deal to do what I want. So I guess I'll just sack that. Sure. Oh, it's just the seven six. Okay. No Eldrazi for them. They're like, wait a second. <laughs> Nothing tramples, right? Oh, that's pretty good. Hey, this Colossal Dreadmask has been somewhat impressive. Just like in the late game, you have all these spawns lying around. You just don't feel bad about trading this with anything, and then you just move it somewhere else. I just feel like most of these green ramp decks just always want at least one... Probably, like, you want one copy of this card. It's, it, it seems decent. I mean, it allows you to break open these games where you play the Eldrazi Mirror, where both sides are just like, oh, I'm just looking at you, right? And then you just get them. Let me think here. Um, so this costs five mana. I'm gonna wait. Let's see, they're at 11 life. I have so many chump blockers. So as long as they don't have trample, we're good. I might wanna do this end of turn now just because it, it opens up my mana next turn. So if I kill this, then I can trade and then move this next turn. And then I also have a 3-3 in play. Like it really isn't the end of the world if they just have some weird combat trick here. I mean, they have something. Oh, wow. Oh, that was... Literally the best possible. Are you kidding me? That is actually absurd. What a draw. Unbelievable. That was that was a clean three for one. We went from being is extremely ahead to not necessarily in a great spot anymore. Wow. That's absurd. Are you kidding me? What? Oh my gosh. I'm just going to get aggressive here. They just have way better creatures. I do have chump blockers. And I'm going to lean on the fact that the writhing chrysalis will just block whatever. And hope that that gets me there. Like obviously if he top decks another removal spell for the chrysalis, then it's game over anyways. So. 
Wow. That's the that's gonna be like the best collective resistance you're ever gonna see. Oh my gosh. They're at seven life. I mean, I'm definitely blocking this if they attack me. That's just lethal. If I get my trickster back. Oh, they get a chumper. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's unfortunate. Okay, uh, let's discard this forest and hope we can find some action here. That's something. Now they have the tough choice of, I guess they're just going to take it, sure. That's fine. Alright, just draw like a land. That would be cool. I guess they drew some spell land, so it's it kind of counts as those are lands as well. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, what do you have? They can get Expanding Ooze back. Or Hydra Trainer, sure. So they can sack these spawns for cards. Man, that dread mask. I re <sighs> That was that was supposed to be my mirror breaker. That was supposed to be my mirror breaker. Oh well. All right. They're going to get <sighs> expanding Ooh, they sacked the brood scale. I see. I see. Then they're going to sack the spawn to get the brood scale back, I guess? They're kind of going off. And then they get to, and then they get to sack the sp Oh man, this nightmare is really going off. Now they can use that to get back, I don't know, the Dream Drinker jam Vampire maybe, if they want. That was a huge, huge draw. I didn't think it was going to be that good. All right. They're at six life. How do I, how do I win this? Yeah, this nightmare with all these ETB effects and such definitely might be a lot better than I gave it credit for, I will say. They're at six life. We have, yeah, it's not enough. Damn! Basking Brood Scale. Getting it done because you get the token. So you just constantly have things to sacrifice. That's wonderful. Look at how jealous I sound. All right. They have Hydra Trainer in their graveyard. 
What do they want to sack? Oh, sure. Okay. I mean, this is a lot of wheel spinning. I guess you can sack the Hydra Trainer and... You set, you've you spent a lot of mana to, like, get a Basking Brood Scale into play, I guess. But, I mean, honestly, in this board where I'm just not doing a whole lot, I mean, it's, it's still good. I haven't drawn any of my 4 damage to the face card. So maybe my plan is to just burn my opponent out with my 2 copies of my Skoa. So now they play that and then they can sack my spawn their spawn and then get the Hydra Trainer back. Yeah. I mean this is very slow, but in matchups like this with what's happening right now, it gets it done, I guess. So they have I have seven attackers and they have six blockers. So they only go to five if I draw the removal spell. That's unfortunate. Okay, I'm still looking back at that, um, just the best collective resistance of all time by Lola Man. I think this is Lola Man. Maybe they make a somewhat aggressive attack and then I get to just burn them out because they're at six. That's kind of the hope here. I guess they can make their Dream Drinker Vampire gigantic by exerting with the Hydra Trainer. Oh, no, no. I can just sack my spawns. So if they if that's their plan, I can still not... I can still... I'll still be okay. So I could double block the Dream Drinker Vampire. And then if they exert, then I can just sack my two Scions. Sure. All right, so let's block here, block here, block there. Okay. So now... Oh, they can still play this and get something back, but they'd have to sacrifice their Dream Drinker Vampire. Okay, if I draw Skoa and they don't sack anything here, I win. They're probably going to sacrifice this Vampire, though. I think. Maybe not. Okay, Skoa. If I draw Skoa, I win. I have two outs. Whew. Come on! Oh! What? <laughs> Skoa for the win! Skoa for the win! What a draw! Oh my gosh. What a rip! What a rip! What a legend! What a what an epic game this was. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was a sick like the last turn with the double sack just so they don't gain infinite life. I think they were hoping we didn't see that. Oh man. You're at three.
To the dome! Yes! To the dome! All right, and into silver. Okay, this one. This, this is a decent run. A blessed run. What are we at now? Six and two playing for a trophy. The first of hopefully many. All right, now we're playing against Hall of Famer Gabriel Nassif. He's gold already? Jeez. I guess um, this started at 6 a.m. and I kind of started at 8.30 just because I value my sleep. So I guess a lot of people had more opportunities and they probably won more than I did because we did not start things off too strong. Wow, Skoa off the top rope. Let's go. Blue-green ramp for Nasif. Okay, planar genesis. Is this main phase? Sure is. Uh, good. The thing is, our deck is just so absurdly slow, it just doesn't matter. Just no punishment. But that was his only land drop for the turn. I see. I kind of need to kill that, I think. Alright, well, no, they, they had a land. Or, did they? I don't know. Maybe they drew it that turn. Ella Damry, okay. Alright, no, never mind. It's just like mono spell lands. Need a red source here. To be able to play Skoa to kill Ella Damry, but this needs two untapped creatures, so it's kind of hard. Although maybe now they'll be able to... No, they need... Okay. I do want to kill Ella Damry. I don't want them to just cheat big things into play. So, Mountain? One time? That does not get me a Mountain. Oh, a handful of double red cards. I did add a mountain and cut a forest, too. I mean, I'm happy just trading the Chrysalis for the Yellow Damry here, honestly. So, we'll see. Alright. If they cheat something in... Now, the nice thing is they can only do it on their own turn. So, if he plays a creature and then puts a big thing into play, like, they're kind of tapped out, minus the big thing that's in play. Definitely playing against some ringers here. Got Lola. I think I got Lola in the last one. Played against Corticals, played against Papa Hat. Strong opposition. Perilous landscape, okay. What you got? Maybe just like a 7-7 seven, seven Vigilance thing? That would be pretty good. Or the 6-8. I mean, either of the 7-man Eldrazi commons would be annoying. Okay. So they make a token, and then they're going to activate this ability and put something large into play. Oh god. What is it? Kozilek? What? <laughs> that is amazing. That is truly amazing. Gosh, couldn't find a red source still. Oh my gosh, this thing is ridiculous. It's a 9-9? What do I do? Oh man. Oh my gosh. Um... Oh my gosh. How am I supposed to beat this? I 
I guess I can just try to go wide, but it's just not... This is not it. Kozilek, huh? I mean, obviously you want to cast this if you can, but... Red Green definitely has trouble with 9-9s. Red Green in general does have trouble with opposing Eldrazi, right? You just have to just try to have bigger things than them. And then I guess the Dread Mask is the thing that lets you go over the top in some instances. Black is a good color to kill some of these big things. But now, I mean, how am I going to beat this in the late game? Like, they get to play creatures for free off the top. They have a shuffle effect. This thing is also a mana sink to put a bunch of scions into play, which are 4-4s, four by the way. Okay. You know what? Going out at 6-2 and two against Kozilek and a very sweet deck with a bunch of mythics is an okay way to go. I'm just going to say. I'm okay with this. Everything is fine. We'll just hop into another draft. It's all good. GG's. What, what am I supposed to do? It's a Hall of Famer. You play against a Hall of Famer, you just lose. That's just... This, you know, it's just, it just happens. Like, like I said, if we were able to draw the Red Source to play the Skoa on time, this, I think we might have actually been favored or in a much, much better spot to be able to prevent the Eladamri from cheating the Kozilek into play. And then we would have more pressure, but just didn't have it there. And uh, now we... Uh, we're probably dead here. Kill a 6-6 six, six and draw two, discard one, huh? Oh, and evolve. Because why not? I dare you to attack me. It's too late. The damage has been done. The damage has been done. I don't even know what to kill. I guess... Oh my gosh. Uh, this is just... Just... This is an exercise in futility. If anything. Other colorless creatures you control get plus three, plus two. What? What? Oh my gosh! They have Ulamog as well? Are, sure. Let's just let them have their fun. How big is this thing? Oh, it's an 1817. No big deal. No big deal. Let's hit them with the nice. <laughs> hey, all right, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna let them do it. You know what I mean? Let's just... I'm just, I'm just playing random cards. And... Um, and then let's just, uh, let's just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, look, we're having fun here, okay? Attack with the Ulamog. We want, we want Nasif to attack with the Ulamog. I want an Annihilator for eight. What? Well, look, he's just, he's still playing tight. He's still doing things. Okay, here we go. Uh, fetch land. Cycle for the Eladamri. Oh, they see the top card. Annoyed Altasaur into Horrific Assault. This is amazing. Horrific Assault, Fight, I mean Bite. Okay, good. Four, five, six, seven. Hold on, check this out. I want, I, I want to have no permanence in play. I think we can do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, no, I should have sacked the dread mask. Oh, I punted. I punted. Oh, you gotta sack the, oh, you know what? Ah, oh, I punted. You know what, it's okay. Last permanent in play is a colossal dread mask. Good game. <laughs> oh man, that was great. Hey. This is the Eldrazi ramp deck that people were hoping for, right? It's the blue-green deck, it's got Ulamog and Kozilek, and Nasif was able to take it down with a very, very sweet deck, but 
Nevertheless, I am still a little bit surprised that we ended up going six and three with this deck. We definitely had a, look at our curve. We definitely had a lot of power at the top end of our mana curve, but we just didn't have enough things to do early. And that is kind of what led us to getting run over a little bit in the early game. But cards that really stood out, Writhing Chrysalis is just absolutely unbelievable. I think it's just better than almost all my other cards here. Uh, really need to put a higher emphasis on uh, cheap uh, cheap cards to play, cheap, cheap interaction or cheap acceleration. It that heralds the end, I think might be worse than it looks because it's actually not easy to play this on turn two. And if you can't play it early, then it's probably just not that strong. So I feel like unless you're, you know, uh, a lot of the times your colorless sources are going to come from your scions or spawns or whatever. And so for that reason, I just think I like this a little bit less. It's it's definitely worse than just, you know, if this was one in a green for a 2-2 two -two that had this effect. You just can't cast this turn two all the time. Skull was decent. Ral was decent. There are definitely matchups where it's not as good. So I'm not going to take this as highly. It's a great sideboard card, but three is definitely too much for a deck like this. Spell lands are obviously great, and like I said, Colossal Dreadmask definitely seemed better than it looks. I think this is a C-level card. It's definitely a way to kind of close out games when you have all these random uh, spawn tokens laying around. But, best finish that we've had so far! Six and three with Gruul, Gruul Eldrazi, and hopefully we can continue this string uh, of uh, wins and end with a trophy in a future video. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you've enjoyed the content, I do have a Patreon channel. The link to the Patreon is in the description below. It's patreon.com slash Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.